was 15 at the time, and I kind of felt alone, and I didn't feel a real connection with my surgeon. I just met with him. He gave me, you know, the piece of paper that says, this is what you can expect, this is what the rehab's like, this is what you can and can't do, and see you in surgery. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what being a in a hospital bed was like. I had never had any issues with that. So it was very intimidating at first. Didn't seem right after surgery. You know, you can always just tell. And I couldn't bend my knee. And that was so strange to me is you're sitting there and you can't go cross-legged. You can't, I couldn't squat. I couldn't kneel. I couldn't do anything on my knee. Nobody really had any answers. Just, you know, you're doing okay. You're doing okay. I don't see anything substantially wrong. You're doing okay. Keep going. When I got a new physical therapist when I moved to school, he said, this is not okay. This is not the norm. This is a, a screw sticking out of your leg. You know, you shouldn't be able to, you should be able to bend it. You should be able to put pressure on it. So he urged me to go see my surgeon again, even though I had seen him three or four times. I didn't go in there saying, this is what's wrong with me. Please fix it. I said, hey, listen, you know, I, it's not right. It's been funky. What can we do? My physical therapist thinks this is a screw. Can you, can you take it out? Can you take a look? Can you help me? So I didn't think I was being too forceful. You know, he kind of passed it off as, oh, it's fine. You're going to be okay. It's just, it's going to take longer to heal. No big deal. And um, it turns out that he was wrong. That last appointment had been about three and a half years after my surgery. I could be active, but I couldn't predict when it was going to hurt, when it was going to buckle, when it was not going to function as a normal knee. So the three and a half years were livable, but they weren't enjoyable and they were always, you know, I was always limited in things I could do or things I couldn't do or I was in pain and really uncomfortable. To not have any control over being able to push myself was really frustrating and especially I felt like I was crazy, like I was making up these problems. Like I would go to see him and he would say, oh you're fine, just give it time, it's just nothing terrible but just not comfortable. And then I would go run and fall down. I couldn't be who I wanted to be and I felt like I was making everything up and I didn't really have any problems, but I did. In my last appointment with my first surgeon about my screw, I was saying, you know, it's really uncomfortable. And he goes, well, what? when is it uncomfortable? And I said, when I wear the knee brace you prescribed me to get. And he goes, oh, you don't have to wear that anymore. And I was like, well, you have to, you told me I have to wear this for the rest of my life. Why do I not have to wear it anymore? He goes, oh, only after three years you can stop wearing it. So that was very, another red, red flag to me. Um, but so I stopped wearing my knee brace during my field hockey games. And I just ended up pivoting and my knee was so weak and so, there was nothing really holding it together. So it just, my femur slid right off my tibia, sliced my ACL in half again. And I spent 12 hours in the emergency room waiting to get it x-rayed. Well, my second surgeon was great. She knew me. She could tell my personality. She knew I was a go-getter. She knew I was really stubborn and hard-headed, so she worked that into the treatment plan, which was she, we, she did a CT scan of my knee to find out I had two huge rotting holes in my bone, and that needed to be fixed before my ACL could be fixed. Um, and because she knew that I was ready to get this done and get this over with, she laid out a structure of a plan of, you're going to get a bone graft first, and we need to make sure that that's going to take before we can give you a new ACL. And so I had to wait, I think it was six months between my second knee surgery of the bone graft before I could do my second ACL um, because she knew that it was really important to get this done right. And she wanted, because of all my troubles before, she wanted to make sure that I had all the time to heal and everything was going to go smoothly. As soon as my bone graft was healing, you know, you could, the rotting tissue, as gross as that sounds, the rotting tissue was gone. And so my knee could be healthy again in the new healthy tissue could grow and I could start to bend. That, that was the first time in probably four and a half years that I could actually bend my legs or sit Indian style. Um, and I could squat and I could, it was such a revelation for me to have this new knee. And the initial meeting was where everything just started going downhill. We didn't make a solid connection. We didn't start off on the right foot. We didn't share anything. We didn't talk about this case. Like I said, it was just cut and dry, my two o'clock appointment. So I think the process really starts with 
kicking things off and really it's like a journey and you got to start the journey somewhere and with someone and I think that would be the first step in the process that would need to be fixed. <laughs>